Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about language comprehension. Specifically, I have three easy activities that you can do with your first and second grade students to help develop a stronger language and reading comprehension. And these specifically are going to focus on sentences. When we teach our students all about reading, you know, we generally start with sounds and letters, build up to words, go into sentences, which make up paragraphs and longer stories, right? It's kind of like these building blocks here. And when we can really focus in on the sentence level, there's actually a lot we can do to help develop students' reading comprehension as they go on to longer passages. There was actually a bunch of research done in the 70s and 80s with students in first, second, third, and fourth grade, I believe, um, and simply working on sentence structure and syntax alone really increased their reading comprehension scores later on in the year. And I feel like that makes sense. There's a lot happening at the sentence level of our stories, and when we get students to really dissect those sentences, sentences and understand different, you know, sentence structures and the way sentences work, as those become more complex in their reading, they'll understand them a little bit better. So if you're ready to hear these three easy activities you can do with your students, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. All right, activity number one to develop language comprehension is to practice sentence anagrams and to practice them often. Now, a sentence anagram is essentially a puzzle where you take a sentence and you will go ahead and break it apart by words. So each word will have like its own little index card. They'll be all mixed up and students have to put the sentence together in a way that makes sense. It's vitally important for students to understand that words need to go together in a specific order to actually make meaning. Um, of course, it's going to help develop their oral language comprehension as well as their reading comprehension when they understand the way our words work together. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but for a quick example, here you can see the eight different words. They are all jumbled up. Definitely you would want to start this whole group so your students understand uh, what this type of activity looks like and how it will work. You will also want to make sure to make this a little simpler for your students, but also have them understand, you know, important concepts of a sentence that the first word in the sentence will be capitalized and the last word in the sentence will include punctuation. But here the sentence is split up at the word level and you'll work together with your students to rearrange these cards to make a sentence. When you go ahead and rearrange these cards, the sentence that they make is the ducks waded into the pond at dusk. Now I like the sentence again, there are actually two of the words the, one has that capital T there, so I did that on purpose so students would decide, okay, that is the one that goes at the beginning of the sentence. But then when you're just starting with the, we take a look and we could see the ducks would work, the pond would work, the dusk would work. Students start to understand what words would work next to the and what words wouldn't. Now, of course, you can do this with any sentence you want. You can make up a sentence and go ahead and chop it up into words and have them rearrange it. But of course, you want to be a little more purposeful with it. So I did choose some words there like weighted and dusk that I would think my first and second grade students that we could talk about. We could add that to their vocabulary and, you know, really discuss what that means. So just adding a little bit more intentionality into this activity is important as well. Now, once students rearrange the sentence to make it make sense, it's important that you don't just end the activity. Taking a look back at that sentence, you want to go ahead and ask your students W-based questions, you know, who, what, where, when, why, about that sentence so we can continue to make meaning. So I would ask my students here, who is doing something in this sentence? And we can realize the ducks are. We can talk about how we knew that. You can ask your students, where is someone going? When are they going? You can even ask your students, why are the ducks wading into the pond at dusk? Now, it's important to note that the why is not answered in this sentence, but the lack of why is actually a good thing for students to understand that the text isn't telling us yet. We need some more context. We would need to learn more information to answer that question. That alone is a good teaching point. Doing a sentence anagram at least once a week with your students is great practice. Um, and once they are used to doing it whole group, you can definitely have them separate and do it in small groups or with a partner to kind of work on this activity by themselves. And you might wanna give them some talking points on the board, maybe some of those W questions. 
who is doing something in the sentence, where are they going, why, what is happening, etc., and see what they can answer based on their sentences. And then as your students learn about more complex sentences, as those sentences become longer, you don't have to break them up by individual word, but you can break them up into phrases for students to put together as well. Those are just some easy ways to extend this type of activity, but sentence anagrams is activity number one. Activity number two to help develop language comprehension is going to be to experiment with end punctuation. And you can do this both orally and with written expression, but I always start orally first. This type of activity is very simple. All you will need to do is choose a few different sentences with different types of punctuation. After, of course, students would already have to learn what those types of punctuation are, so a period, a question mark, and an exclamation point. Um, they'll probably want to know what they mean, so this would happen after that. But all you would do is tell students, I'm going to say a sentence aloud. We can't, of course, see the punctuation because I'm saying it orally, but you'll tell students that they have to decide, does this sentence end with a question mark, a period, or an exclamation point, and why? So you'll simply pick a sentence and you will say it aloud with its proper intonation. So of course, you know, when we say a sentence that ends in a question mark, our voice tends to go up at the end. That is something that they will want to listen to. If it is an exclamatory remark, we might sound a bit excited. Um, you don't wanna go overboard. You just wanna read it very naturally with the natural intonation that the sentence would have. To gather all student responses, I like to make sure that they are all in on what they think the answer is, so I'm not just calling one by one. Uh, to do this, you could do things like have a little paddle board where students might have, you know, a period on one side, an exclamation point on the other, or a question mark. That would take a little bit of prep, but that might be something fun for them. You could have them simply use their whiteboards and hold up. They could write down the uh, punctuation they think it is and hold it up. You could on the big board have one, two, and three, each one being a different punctuation mark and they would hold up with their fingers what they think it is. This way you can quickly gauge how students are doing before diving in and asking for more explanation. Like I mentioned earlier, you will want to start this type of activity orally so they can hear the way you say each sentence and then decide, but you'll definitely want to bring in some written expression as well. So you can do the same type thing by writing different sentences on the board, without any punctuation and students need to again decide what punctuation goes at the end and explain why. And activity number three for developing language comprehension is to have students combine and build sentences. Now in first and second grade you don't need to go into super super detail about what all the different types of sentences are and the different parts of each sentence. In second grade I definitely tell my students about the three types of sentences simple, compound, and complex. That is something we do touch upon in second grade. Um, in first grade, we really try to stick to simple and compound first. And we do this in both reading and writing, meaning I like my students to be able to recognize simple and compound sentences as well as write their own. Now, I have an entire unit about teaching students how to write their own sentences in a very structured way. It looks like this right here over on TPT. And I even made a video kind of walking through those steps. Here's that video. I will link it down in the description in case you want more information about how I do this. Now, for my young students, I really want them to be able to identify what a simple sentence is, meaning I want them to notice that it has a naming part and a telling part. Um, so I want them to be able to not only write a sentence like that, but also again, look at a sentence and identify what's the naming part, what's the telling part of a simple sentence. Now, other people have different terms instead of uh, naming part and telling part. Whatever the term you wanna use is totally fine and ends up being the same in the end. Once my students are able to write and identify some simple sentences, we definitely go right into practice making super sentences, um, which is what I call them in that unit, but a super sentence essentially would be a compound sentence in many cases. Um, maybe in second grade it might be more of a complex sentence. It'll be up to you, but basically taking a simple sentence and expanding it. That is the type of activity you want your students to get used to doing. And to emphasize this again, you want students to be able to do this orally, so they should be able to listen to a simple sentence and tell you the naming part and telling part. They should also be able to read a simple simple sentence um, and maybe identify the naming part and telling part, they should also hopefully be able to write a simple sentence, right? So there's kind of three different ways we want students to end up recognizing these things and then they should compare it with a compound sentence, meaning all they need to do is be like, wait, that's a simple sentence because it has the naming part and the telling part. Here's a compound sentence. I can tell that because we have the conjunction and there and we've kind of combined these two ideas, right? So essentially a lot of this is like sentence play and word play and the 
different ways we can make sentences and the different ways we can combine our words to make different types of sentences. Back in activity number one, we had those sentence anagrams. An extension to that is after they've gone ahead and built the sentence, you can ask them what type of sentence they are seeing there. Um, you can give them two simple sentences and see how they might be able to combine it to make a more compound sentence or a complex sentence. Another idea is to write a few different sentences on the board and have them sort them. What type of sentence do you think this is and why? All of these activities are going to help students really understand the structure of the English language, especially when we're talking about sentences. Now, one last thing I want to mention before I end this video, and it's very important, is that all three of these activities can be done completely uh, independently, meaning like you just choose a random sentence like I shared earlier, mix it up, make an anagram, um, practice sentences without punctuation, try to build new sentences. You can just come up with your own. Um, I mentioned be purposeful in terms of the vocabulary you're choosing, the different types of sentences, but also if you want to really extend this activity and make it even more meaningful, I would choose sentences from a read aloud that you're doing with your class. This is really going to be the most effective way to have students understand these sentences and also talk about a book more than once. Oftentimes we will read a story aloud, ask a few questions and kind of move on with it. But if we can dive into some of the important sentences that are in a text we're reading and really like develop them and talk about the vocabulary that is coming from a story, it's going to enhance your lessons even more. To do this, I would simply look at a text you're reading first and pick out a few important sentences. Maybe they include a vocabulary word you want to teach and you use that one, jumble it up for a sentence anagram to do at the class. Maybe you can find a few different sentences with different end punctuation and choose those as your examples for practicing with different punctuations. Maybe you find a great example of a simple sentence in a compound sentence. You write them both on the board. We dissect them and then students have to decide which is which, which one's a simple sentence, which one's complex or which one's compound. However you want to do it, find those different sentences from a story. All right, so just to recap, the three simple activities you can do with your students include sentence anagrams, experimenting with end punctuation, and combining and building different sentence types. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful activities that you can do with your students. I would love to know if any of these ideas really stuck out to you. Let me know down in the comments below what you plan on using with your own kids. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.